Ahead of yesterday's game against the Tampa Bay Rays, the Toronto Blue Jays made many roster moves, including one surprising cut. And this guy, who was a former top prospect, has already been claimed by another team. So I'm going to break down that in this episode of Jays Digest, as well as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He has spoken out on his potential future in Toronto. So stay tuned for all that coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? It's Goss, your host of Jays Digest, and what a great day yesterday was. If you are a baseball fan, if you are a Toronto Blue Jays fan, and just in general, they took care of the Tampa Bay Rays in convincing fashion. We obviously had a video about it yesterday, but today we're going to be discussing some other things. Obviously, they play again against the Rays tonight at, at around 7 Eastern, but we have some interesting things to discuss today. And yesterday, before yesterday's game, there were some roster moves that were made that were very interesting and may have flown under the radar because of how hyped everyone was, including myself, about, of course, the opening day game. But before we get into that, quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. We're going to have you covered all year long for daily Jays content. And let's just get right into the first topic today, which is the Jays make a surprising roster cut. Now, Again, they had to finalize their 40-man roster yesterday, their 26-man active roster, and they did so. And no major surprises to who actually made the team. But what was a bit of a surprise was that they cut former top prospect Yasver Zulueta. And we had a video about him about a year ago, I believe, and we used to mention him in videos all the time. He was as high as, as the number four prospect in the Toronto Blue Jays system. And then he was DFA'd yesterday, and he obviously currently ranked as the tw- uh, the 17th best prospect in the Jays system. So he fell down a lot. We saw him in spring. He pitched to about a 4.08 ERA, I believe. But... Uh, slew of moves yesterday and here are all the moves in case you missed it obviously brian servin was selected daniel vogelbach danny jansen's on the il manoa romano and swanson are on the il and you can see at the bottom here this is how the team shapes up and this was obviously they played yesterday so most of this is, is known by now but the yas rizuoleta thing is the most interesting one here he has been designated for assignment and this one is very um i guess it's surprising because Yas Rizuoleto was a guy that, for the past however many years, was kind of a top prospect in the Blue Jays system. He projected as a starter for a little bit. He projected as a reliever, then towards the end, a potential closer even. And Jays fans were a bit surprised. Kiki Matheson went on to say the Blue Jays chose the DFA uh, Yas Rizuoleto to clear space on the 40-man. And Zuoleto stayed afloat as the number 17th prospect this season based on the upside of his raw talent. But it's long past time for that to turn into consistent production. Still an arm they'll hope to keep. Zuoleto man would have fall from grace and he was a guy who like i said was a top five prospect in the toronto blue jays system pitched a great velocity control is always a bit of an issue his era was up and down he had a very poor season yesterday in the minor or last season not yesterday last season in the minor leagues and in spring training he didn't do great he was given some opportunities and the reason that he was probably given these opportunities now in hindsight was to kind of test them out and see if he was going to be able to actually perform to potentially make the team or in this case get dfa'd and he didn't really perform great. He's past the point now where they gave him tons of reps in the minors. He obviously didn't get many reps at all in the in the major leagues, but he got some spring training reps, and ultimately, he, he fell from grace. He went down all the way to the 17th best prospect in their system. Now, that being said, it is not super common for a top 30 prospect, or at least a top, you know, a former top prospect, at least, in Yasra Zuleta, to be designated for assignment, because that means, as we all know, that any other team can go ahead and claim him at any moment, and about an hour or two, or someone can correct me in the comments, very shortly after, um, Yasra Zuleta was claimed by the, uh, by the Cincinnati Reds off of waivers, and this was all done before yesterday's game, but this kind of stung a little bit, because obviously, like Keegan Matheson said here, they were hoping that they would be able to keep the arm, keep him in the system, continue to develop, but we knew that as soon as he was DFA'd, some team out there in need of pitching, in need of prospect depth, again, he was still number 17 uh, ranked prospect overall in the Jays system, the Jays have an okay farm system, not very good necessarily, but... He was a former top four prospect, top five prospect. I believe it was number four. Someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I believe it was number four as he was as high as a couple years ago or a few years ago. And now, again, 17th overall prospect. He got claimed right away by the Cincinnati Reds. And usually when you DFA somebody, you know, whether they clear waivers or not, we've seen some times where some of their prospects have have cleared waivers and things like that. But Yasver Zulouette, remember when Mitch White got DFA'd, he cleared waivers, and now he's on the bullpen. He's on the active roster uh, due to several injuries to Swanson, Romano, and all these guys. But he was claimed right away by the Cincinnati Reds. And granted, the Cincinnati Reds are a great team. They don't have too many great pitching prospects, too many great major league depth uh, regarding pitching. But he got claimed right away, and it's going to be interesting to see what he does going forward because he's still a guy with a lot of upside, a lot of raw talent. 
Will he be able to translate it to the major leagues is the major question going forward for Yazer Zuleta. And I wish him all the best. Unfortunately, he didn't get the, uh, I guess he kind of got the opportunity in the minors, but he never really got a chance to perform at the major league level the way that a lot of us Jays fans a few years ago thought he could have. But let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comment section. Happened before yesterday's game was kind of overlooked a little bit and very, very interesting. Now let's get into the second topic, which is also very interesting, which is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. speaks out on his Jays future. And he made a comment uh, a few days ago on the Deep Left Field podcast, but we also remember we covered this a few weeks ago or earlier in the offseason, maybe a month or two ago now. Time is absolutely flying. But a month or two ago, I basically said he would be open to being a Blue Jay for life. And he also came out and said the same thing. I love the Toronto, or I love Toronto, the city, the fans. My daughter loves it here. And I would love to spend my career here and extend the man already. Clap says, like, everyone is saying that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. should be a Blue Jay for life. Granted, the reason that these contract extensions haven't happened yet, or at least the Blue Jays, who knows? It seems like Vladdy wants to extend in Toronto, but we know that he's not going to take a massive pay cut just because it's um, he wants to stay in Canada and all of these things, and his, his family, he loves it here, his daughter loves it here, all this stuff, which are all great things, and it means that a contract extension will most likely get done, but it's because of Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s underperformance in the past couple years. Really, 2021 was only, and 2022 to a degree were his two best seasons. Obviously, 2021, he was the MVP finalist, would have won if Shohei Otani wasn't in, in the league and he had a thousand plus OPS and then ever since then even the years before that he hasn't really shown consistently that he is a 300 to 400 million dollar player that being said yesterday in the opening day obviously only one game went out and hit an absolute moonshot and almost hit a second home run and these contract talks are going to be ongoing throughout the entire year and if Vladimir Guerrero Jr. goes out there and puts up an MVP caliber season the Jays hand is going to be forced to go ahead and extend him as he's a couple of years removed from or away from free agency and if he loves it so much here you do not want to see him go to another team because of uh, nickel and diming uh, by the front office and Ross Atkins you want to go out there and you want to sign him to a long-term deal maybe not right now see how he performs throughout the season his price will probably be driven up just because of how skilled he is and how in shape how ready he came into camp this season and he looks thin he looks ready to go he looks in the best shape of his life and now if he can go out there and he can just continue to do what he did yesterday he there were some crazy stats where he only swung at pitches like in the zone he only swung at a couple outside of it he was looking very very good Vladimir Guerrero Jr. his approach looked good yeah he was only one for five but he just looks like he is ready to take his game to the next level and ultimately I think he will be able to uh to do that properly going forward and hopefully Vladimir Guerrero Jr. will uh, will be a guy that is a Toronto Blue Jay for life because he certainly seems like he wants to be a Blue Jay uh, for life and hopefully I'm praying that you know contract extensions get done because I don't want to see Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in any other uniform obviously the team hasn't really perform to the way that they could have the past few years they haven't won a playoff game but to see them go out there and hopefully uh you know make an impact this season and make a playoff run it'll pay good dividends especially as contract extensions will heat up going forward and into the off season but that'll wrap it up we will have the game covered for you guys tonight hopefully uh, assuming that they uh, it's a great game and things like that but thank you guys for watching if you're excited that baseball is back let me know and hit the subscribe button if you want to check out our video from yesterday click on your screen now and we will see you tomorrow